isolation. An entire city in my disposal, mine to plunder. But instead, I chose to remain in my office looking for that one case that would help me relive my glory days. I was hard at work as usual looking for my next big adventure when she dropped in. She came in like she was on a mission. A mission for what? I didn't know. But I had a feeling my next case was about to begin. Jack Winters, I presume? The sign on the door says miss, but yes, I'm your guy. My name is Evelyn Summer, and I need your help. My daughter has been abducted. I fear for her life. Wasn't this photo in the papers the other day? Police say she's a runaway. What makes you think any different? At first, I did believe the police. You know, she's such an adventurer. Always says that I'm hovering over her. But I feared for her safety. Especially since that sleazy bar opened up down the street. I believe the police were right. About her being a runaway. Until last night. It was Darla, and she called begging for help. She said she was in some strange place with a bunch of other girls, and she had no idea how she got there. All she could tell me was she was near that sleazy bar when she got taken. Then I heard a loud crash, like someone dropped the phone. After that, there was all this yelling, and then the phone went dead. Well, it sounds to me like your daughter's fallen victim to some human traffickers. <laughs> They've been pretty active around these parts the last several months. And with us being so close to New Orleans and Mardi Gras next week. Human traffickers? How do we find her? Well, it's simple. We go to the last place your daughter remembers being, ask around the sleazy bar, somebody's bound to have seen her. There's bound to be somebody there that knows something. That's where we start. I had no idea what kind of adventure this broad had in store for me, but one thing was for certain. The bar she took me to was sketchier than an Egyptian tomb's walls. Everyone we questioned acted dumber than a puppy on a quiz show. No matter what we asked or how we asked it, all we got was crap. I was thinking this whole trip was a bust, and then I saw somebody that I figured might know something. Lenny Balboa. I had had my run-ins with Lenny before. The thing about Lenny was, if it was raining brains, he wouldn't even get wet. I decided to get his hey, attention. The freak! I would dance with you, Lenny, but as you can see, I already have the bra. Why'd you go and swipe my drink like that, Jackie? Better than swiping my fist across your face. Oh, I see you keeping the violence down all because of the lady. What do you want, Dick? Have you seen her? I ain't never seen that girl in my life. I'm calling your bluff, Lenny. You and me got a long history, and I know that you have enough skeletons in your closet to lock you up for a long time. Look, you ain't got no proof of nothing on me, Jackie. So why don't you take your broad and leave me alone? Lenny was a terrible liar, but I knew I wouldn't be able to get anything out of him the easy way. All right, Lenny. I'll go. But just know... I'm always watching.
good did that do us? Nothing. I thought you were going to make someone talk. Lenny Balboa is a terrible liar and tends to panic at the first sight of trouble. I think he's going to bolt out that door any minute now. Why would he do that? Because he knows that I didn't buy a story. And that I know that he knows that I know. And so once he thinks I'm gone, he's going to rush to warn the others. So he's telling me that he's watching me. To make me think he's watching me. So because I think he's watching me, I won't do anything. He's got me trapped in this sleazy bar all night. Wade goes out and finds where that girl in the picture really is. On the other hand, he don't think I'm very smart. So he may be telling me that he's watching me because he really is watching me. So I'll just be sitting here waiting in the bar because he's not so smart as I think he is. On the other hand, he may be testing me. And while he's out there smooching with that broad, I'll be sitting in here in the bar waiting for him. But on the other hand... I thought you said he'd be out any minute now. He will be. He's in there thinking of all the different scenarios. Did I tell him I'm watching him to keep him in the bar? Or did I tell him I'm watching him because I know he's not too smart? Or did I tell him I'm watching him because he doesn't think that Wait. I... Is he coming out any time tonight? He should be coming out right about now. Oh, you're good. You have no idea, doll. No idea. Lenny led me straight to his brother, who I assumed he would spill his guts to while I listened. I made the dame stay in the car. She didn't want to, but I persuaded her. Two-bit dick! I should have slapped him harder. You look like you've seen a ghost. What's your problem? You wet your bed again? <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Shut up, you little jerk. Look, we need to call the boss and tell him we got troubles. Jack Winters is snooping around asking questions about one of the girls we snatched. You really think Mr. Petrenko should be worried about a has-been dick like Jack Winters? New Orleans police can't touch him. I really doubt that Jack Winters can. It's not the boss I'm worried about, it's our skins. I'm calling our boss and telling him that we're out. You're wasting your time. He won't answer the phone. He thinks the feds have his line tapped. You really think winners will give us a brief? Yeah, I do. He's gonna make waves. You know how he is. Well, I'll go out to the ranch tonight. If Mr. P shows up, I'll talk to him. Meanwhile, why don't you see if you can lead our friend Jack on a wild goose chase? Take the kid with you. I ain't no babysitter. Hey! We gotta teach him the business. I'll keep you company. I can't take him out to the ranch. You know how Mr. Petrenko is about new faces. Oh, Pop. Do I gotta? Don't give me any lip. Go with Lenny and don't give him any grief. Got it? Come on, kid. You'll be hanging with the big dogs. Woo, woo. Whatever you say, Lenny. Whatever you say. Do you see your daughter anywhere? There she is. Okay. It's time to make a phone call. There's a payphone down the road. Do you have a nickel? Thanks. You stay here.
Where are you going, Frankie? Please, please, it wasn't my fault. I covered my tracks. It, it, it was Frankie. He's the one that led us to the farmhouse. You, your dumb partner, it does not matter. Because now they're looking at me. Because we're connected. But we won't be connected anymore. Please, Miss Matrinko, I'll go away. I'll disappear, I promise. Yes, you will disappear, Lenny. After Gators get finished with you, you'll disappear really good. No, Mr. Patrico, please, no! No, Vicky. Jack Winters, it's been a long time. Not nearly long enough for me, not nearly long enough. If you think I go without the fight, you're a fool. You'll surrender. I got six reasons why. Really? See, there's two types of men in this world. The bad guys who go to jail. And the good guys who blow the guns. Darla could have been in a world of trouble. In fact, Evelyn has no idea how close she came to never seeing her daughter again. Human trafficking is a multi billion dollar industry that denies freedom to nearly 21 million people around the world. Human traffickers take boys, girls, men, and women and make them slaves for the purpose of sexual slavery, forced labor, or commercial sexual exploitation. Sometimes the victim is forced to marry against their will, often in a foreign country. Sometimes the trafficker provides kidnapped children for organ or tissue harvesting. Traffickers can pose as friends on the internet or through social media accounts. They only need to meet you once, that's all it takes. Sometimes they arrange a meeting with you at your home when your parents are away, then they take you away and you never return. Runaways? They're the biggest risk. No one knows who you are when you're out on the road. You become an easy target for those horrible people. You're already missing as far as your parents are concerned. Now you really are missing, sometimes forever. Statistics tell us that 26% of victims are children and 55% are women and girls. 68% of victims are put into forced labor where they are paid nothing while their owners grow rich off their victim's sweat. Exercise all caution with anyone you meet on the internet. That's also good advice for someone new you might meet at a party, a rave, or some other event. Always be aware of stranger danger, even as an adult. If you want more information about the dangers of human trafficking, you can go to www.dhs.gov slash blue dash campaign or www.polarisproject.org. The National Human Trafficking Resource Center hotline is 1-888-373-7888. Stay aware, it may save your life.